Does anybody else have any comment? Roger, I, I, I have been sitting here trying to get courage to, to tell of the occasion that happened in high school when I was a senior. Uh, we had a superintendent that, we, that everybody didn't like. We didn't like him at all. And this one chap, he decided he was going to fix him. So at Christmas time, he went out and picked up three droppings from a horse and put them in the box. And he, he put a, a piece of paper in there with a note on it, wrapped it all up pretty, and put it under the Christmas tree. Of course, the superintendent always opened his gifts at Christmas time. And he opened it up from one horse's ass to another. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> very good. That takes care of that end of the table, I guess. Uh, <laughs> uh, looking left over here, uh, Miriam, Blanche, okay. Lots of, re lots of reminiscence, but uh, got to be another time. Okay. <laughs> Roger. Yes. I might tell them. Okay, when Miriam. Gustav was my grandfather, but Gustav was my grandfather, Pauline was his sister. She married Barney Ackerman and they built a farm up where Heartland is now, where I'm reciting. <laughs> so quite ironic. It's gone, wheels gone wrong. <laughs> okay, then I said also at the end there'd be questions if you'd like to ask specific questions to any one of the members. I have one thing to say. Okay. Henry only told a part of the story. Oh. No. Yeah. His mother planted lilacs all through that wood. <laughs> when the, I used to visit to her when she was up to Heartland. Well, where, took, where is that, Henry? Right on the corner of Lamus and Hancock. Hancock. Oh, Blue house, gray house. I'll have to drive down there. <laughs> Actually, planting hollyhocks in the woods is rather a novel thing. Today, they'd be planting something else. Uh, <laughs> lilac. <laughs> 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 we won't go there, okay. Um, other comments? Questions? I thought there was a myrtle. No, no, no. No, hollyhocks, because they Actually, you know, if you're out in the country and you're driving along and you do see something like, uh, like a patch of myrtle or also like lilac, lilac bushes, uh, chances are there was an old farmhouse. You know, you see the old the old trees standing there. And there's always the clues, and um, yeah. Um, any other comments? Yes. Do we have time for a song? A song? Sure. Who's going to sing it? Dexter. Dexter. Oh, Dexter. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you remember my first real friend or not, but her name was Flamin' Mamie. Oh, yes. They call her Flamin' Mamie, the surefire vamp, the hottest baby in town. She's a hard scorcher, she's a human torture, she's a gal that brings them down. Now of all those damp and turning mamas, not one compares, for she carries fire insurance on everything she wears, which isn't much. And when it comes to loving, she's a human oven, but she's hard to understand. Now it may sound funny, but paper money would burn right in her hand. And the fireman so old that he had to retire said she's the hottest thing he's seen since the Chicago fire. <laughs> they call her flaming mammy, the surefire man, the hottest little baby in town. I don't mean baby, the hottest little baby in town. Hey, hey. Good one, good one.
also, you know, when, when we talk about the King family, uh, we all remember Junior King, Junior King, Lee King, and the bands. And I, I see Mary Lee back there, and, and you know, they always play down at Murray's. And uh, I, I think music somehow uh, is in the King family. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um, okay, who else? What else? Jean, do you want to? Well, just please, uh, if you are through. I, I think we are, are we through? Yeah. Help every yourself else? to the refreshments since they're over there because there's all kinds of cookies. And I, I, just, I just have one question. Okay. Yeah. I know we, uh, Henry was a big part of starting the whole pumpkin roll. Which of course is coming up again. When did that actually? When did kids actually start rolling pumpkins down that hill? Before I did. <laughs> <laughs> so a long time ago. Yeah, it, that went on a long time because it, it was something that I partook in too before it was uh, limited. I I was one of them that that. Uh, Louis Buttleman used to chase. Louis Buttleman was our constable. And um, one time, we, he used to park his vehicle down at Ornberger's, which is where a T car is now, Ornberger's gas station, Shell Station. And he was out checking doors, so we got a couple of cement blocks and lifted the rear wheels just off the ground. <laughs> And then we went up the top of the hill and rolled a bunch of pumpkins down. And he knew we were on the top of the hill, so he got in his car and he put her in gear. And boy, oh, <laughs> he didn't go anywhere. So we walked down nonchalantly down town. Gave him a hand to put his car back on the road. Kinder was gentler than you. Great story. Then, then I ended up being a policeman. <laughs> <laughs> in the early 30s, we start playing at the Jack and Jill Ranch, and we played out there for about 35 years. And the reason I say that is, some of the girls out there married fellas from this area. Benny Schultz, Benny Schultz's wife came from there. And uh, I, I went to the jazz concert Sunday with my son-in-law over at the Oak Ridge Country Club, and there was two fellows came up and said, Dexter, I can remember when we used to come out, and before we were married, when we used to come out to Jack and Jill Ranch. We had to get passes to get in to begin with, and if we wanted to date any of the girls, we had to get date passes. We put our, our license, car license on them and our driver's license, and if there was any hanky-panky, they just tore up our passes, and we weren't allowed out there anymore. So, Who's in the I, picture, Dexter? There was usually quite a few fellas from this area that came there, uh, because there was 250 guests, and about 175 of them were women. So we needed some fellas to, to come out to dance. And the fellas came from North Muskegon, from Shelby, and Hart, and Fremont, Whitehall, Montague, and they had a good time out there, but the girls from town didn't like it because their boyfriends were going out there on Tuesdays. We started playing Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, and then we ended up playing just Thursday and Sunday for, for 35 years, but we had a lot of fun out there. Let me just add to that, during the Second World War, when it was only ladies out of Jack and Joe, practically even probably closer to 100%, they used to send a bus down to White Lake and take us senior high schoolers out there to dance with the girls. <laughs> but I don't, none of my classmates hitched up with any of them. We all ended up here. In fact, our motto for graduation was rowing, not drifting. But out of 32 of us who graduated, I think only three rode because most of us stayed right here in White Lake. <laughs> okay, um, I, I, I just a comment about uh, Henry talking about the, the Louis the Law. We call I, our generation called him Louis the Law. <clears throat> the nice thing about Louis the Law was he was always parked down 
um, by Banks Delivery Barn or whatever across the street. And so, like, you knew immediately where the cop was. There was only one. And so, uh, you know, you could sort of um, misbehave elsewhere. Um, Louis used to get us in as much trouble as he got us out. We'd be down to Green Haven eating, and he'd say, you know, so and so up there's got a beautiful punk, a batch of pumpkins. Then he'd go up and wait for us. <laughs> well, the White Hawk cop, he had a little old hat and a little old coop and everything. But I, I'm trying to think of his name. Raleigh, Raleigh Merrick. Raleigh, 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 Raleigh was, yeah, and he had a white uniform for summers. Remember when the tourists came? He had a white outfit, white hat. Really, really spiffy in this small town, boy. What <laughs> car would you call that little thing? With a Chevrolet. But I mean, it was a two-door little coupe cool. thing. Cool. With a roadster, wasn't it? With a rumble seat. With a rumble seat. Right, with a rumble seat. Where could he put his We didn't take prisoners. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Whitehall didn't have a job, or a jail. Montague did have a jail in the back of the fire station. We used to have a jail. Where was it? And on the old city hall. Yeah. We didn't, I never saw the one in the White Hall. Wasn't yeah. as fancy. Wasn't as good as ours. Ours was bigger. <laughs> <laughs> you had more taverns over here, but we had bigger jails over there. Rolly forgot to take. He forgot to take. One night he put a guy in there and he forgot to go through him. And that door, I think, is eight inches back there in the jail. And when he got there in the morning, that guy down there carved through that door to get at the latch. He used to take us in there all the time and show us that garbage. Okay, I, I, any other comments? Uh, thank you for, for your patience on Saturday night. I, I, I'm, I'm glad they put this panel together, the Sesquicentennial Committee, because basically there are some good stories. and. Um, and we shall all should kind of know more about the area, et cetera. I always have a kind of old city planning background. I always feel that the more people know about a place, the more they respect it, the more they appreciate it. And uh, that's to me, that's a great role of the historical society, it's just to keep all the yarns and the stories going and, uh, and realize that we do live in a very special place. So uh, thank you, and Jean? Just now, drive safely and have a cookie.